Hey, Richard here um, from Facts for Working People, you know the blog. I'm sitting on my porch as I've done a number of times and <clears throat> made a few uh, videos here and there. Some of these are for my friends back in England and also uh, Ireland and different parts of the world where I have friends just to share my views on things, you know. I was thinking of something today. If you don't live in the US, uh, it's very, very, it can be very depressing. Uh, particularly if you watch, particularly if you watch the news, like my local news is just filled with, um, well, the, the first four or five stories will be about murders, and then there'll be the weather and fires are burning this and for, it's really um, designed to f make you feel um, d d to disillusion you, to make you feel depressed, to make you feel like there's nothing I can do about this horrible world we live in. Of course, that's not true, and I try to post stuff to my blog that shows us that there's that, that there's no need to feel that way. Even in this country, there's huge struggles going on. But I, I was thinking about in terms of these, like in Oakland, it has gotten where there's a lot of poverty. There's a lot of poverty throughout the United States. In Mississippi, right now, in the capital, the state, the, it's the poorest state in the nation. In the capital of Mississippi, Jackson, you know, they're trying desperately to get people water about 150,000 people need drinking water but not just drinking water they're pumping non-potable water to them uh, for their toilets and for, for other things that we use water for but I was thinking you know last week I think a week back Sunday there was a, a down in Oakland you've got Chinatown I was down there the other week and it was a bit depressing for me because it's a historic place the Chinese, you know, built the railroads from to the east, and they met uh, the Irish who were bu building them from the west. They met in Promontory, Utah, and there's a famous picture of, I think it was Crocker or Stanford or one of those bourgeois. Uh, Crocker was a banker, Stanford, you know, they named the university after, after him. I'm not sure what he did, but he didn't work for a living. And there's a famous picture of Stanford, I think it is, Leyland Stanford, uh, knocking in the last railroad spike. And so Chinatown has a certain amount of history. I vid videoed a little bit. I used to hang out there and um, uh, I eat my, uh, buy my bolo baos and my lin yung beng and my, my other little pastries at the Chinese coffee shops and hang out with some old Chinese fellas down there. So the, you've got that and there have been a number of killings there. And uh, the, one of the first one, or uh, violence acts, was an old 90-year-old knocked down by a guy of course, it was a black guy that knocked him down. A number of the perpetrators in these instances are black guys. Same in America, well, I, in, the, in my community, which I call petty crime. Co more conservative people have said, well, no crime's petty. Well, there is petty crime. But, but, but um, so I remember when that first happened, that old guy got knocked over, and the first things out of the words out of their mouth were, uh, this could increase tensions between the Chinese and the Asian community, a uh, black community. <clears throat> well, why need it do that? Firstly, there's nothing to suggest that it might be a racial hatred crime. It could be more likely be a crime of opportunity. Most of the young Chinese that came out of Chinatown have moved to the suburbs. They're very Americanized. The Ch Chinatown's full of older people, a lot of activity. They're walking around close by. There is, a, there is a black community that's fairly poor, uh, and Latinos are also in the same position, immigrants from Central America. And so, you know, it's a, it could as easily have been a crime of opportunity, but they like to play the race card, the ruling class, to sow division between these communities. And I remember one time, you know, you have to always think of the bigger picture in our world. I was working on a job with Barbara Corkins, I mentioned her name because I'll, I'll probably tag her on Facebook. She was one of the few women workers in our blue collar world, a good worker. And I remember we were, Rennie Bray was the foreman and we were on 66th and Sacramento, if you know the East Bay and Oakland area. And there was a young woman, a white woman, maybe, I don't know, 20, could have been 18. She was pr a prostituted woman on the, on the corner or in an intersection. And there were two young black youth up there and they were talking to her and one of them just cold cocked her, knocked her in the face, knocked her down. She just went sunk to the ground like a sack of potatoes. And I felt such anger 
and hatred towards those the guy that hit her, the other guy, but the guy that hit her. I wanted to, I dreamt and f uh, uh, and and fantasized about killing him for a brief moment. And I remember I talked to Barb a little about it, and I forget who the other the other person was on the crew. We were very vulnerable. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. We have we're a water company. We're not cops, you know. But I did call the cops, but I didn't say who I was. And I went up to the liquor store up there. It's still there, I think. And she had re recovered by then. And the cop was asking who did it. And I wasn't going to describe them. I just said it was two youth, two black youth, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't going to describe them. One, for fear of our safety. If the cops said, well, East Bay Mud Crew saw and blah, 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 you're a dead, uh, dead duck. We have no, no, no protection out there like the phone company, and often the, the police and the, 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 the security forces use utility vans uh, in order to capture and uh, uh, keep tabs on street drug dealers who are the little guys. The, the big guys don't have a problem. They live in Piedmont. It's, in, it's interesting to note that the U.S., which never uh, uh, allowed uh, 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 foreign uh, air, airplanes, foreign foreign um, uh, and hostile aircraft to come in and bomb our cities uh, can't apparently stop cocaine dealers coming up from in airplanes from uh, Central America. But anyway, I, I, and those two young youth walked by me as they walked by and I felt such hatred for them and I thought to myself, I thought to myself, oh, I hate them and I had to, I had to really think deep down politically, well they're victims too. There's nothing for them. They've been declassed. Anti, they're antisocial. They're trying to survive. I used to live in East Oakland, a uh, fairly depressed neighborhood. And believe me, on the corner they rule. It's their world. And they see very little. They're a bit like the petty bourgeois in many ways, but not legal. They, they, they are very narrow in their view. And they're on that corner. They're the king. And so I didn't do anything. But what reminded me about it today as well was something I saw on next door. It's a gossipy sort of local chat stuff. I, last week there was a Chinese dentist that was also shot. She's sitting in a car. Two guys pull up in a car. One runs round, probably try to get a wallet or something. She pr she resisted. I heard it's a no no. Shot her dead. She's 40, 45, very well uh, liked in the Chinese community, which is right next to. Well, she was shot in Little Saigon, which is Asian but mostly um, uh, Vietnamese. She was shot there, and I thought, what a way to what a way to end her life. I felt the same way about the two guys that the the, 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 the shot her, or the one that shot her out of the two, you know. But what a horrible way to die! What a pathetic way to die! And but you know, we've had the COVID. I see that the U.S. Um, life expectancy has declined. It's not decli as de declined as much among blacks as whites. But imagine if you're a middle, I'm a working guy, I'm suffering too, but not like somebody that's poor. And most of the poor in this country, uh, there's millions of white poor, but percentage-wise are people of color and immigrants and so forth. Native Americans in particular, they're the worst hit. And that's primarily, people will say, well, it's structural racism. Yes, it is, but that's built into capitalism. That's the question. You can't deal with that. If it's hurt, it's hurting whites too. You'll often see people talk about the poor people of color, and millions and millions upon what of white people are, are, are suffering. Even they have this term "working poor." What does that mean? So, yes, there's, there's structural racism, but that's a systemic problem. It's a problem of the system, primarily. But you always have to remind yourself because the guys that shot this Chinese dentist. There's going, to, there's going to be more police. We don't get enough police, and then they, there's all of this crime going on, and you know, that's what's going to happen. The trade union leaders are absolutely silent. Not a word from them. You know, we have a bloody contract negotiations between the ILWU and the port bosses. In other words, the ILWU can shut down the west coast of California, Cal of the United States. The California is the, the sixth largest economy or seventh largest economy in the world. LA is probably the 10th or 11th, and nothing. They're not reporting on this dispute because the ILWU leadership and Biden uh, 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 and the bosses are agreed, no strike, don't disrupt the market, don't disrupt 
capitalism. That's the situation we're in. So consequently, we take it out on each other. I know and I see there's developments taking place in Britain, very good ones, where union leaders, they're not socialists necessarily, but there's certainly those that are standing up and want to organize working class power to fight back. That's a good step forward. But we always, when you see a crime like that, guy, two, two, two Latinos kidnapped a, a Latina, threw him in the trunk of a car, sh shot her, threw her in the trunk of the car, shot her, uh, and of course they mentioned they're members of the M13 Latino gang. Those ga that gang kills nobody by comparison to the US security forces and to the US military. They want us to hate, and of course they're probably from El Salvador or something. They want us to hate them, blame them. It's easy to do that. They did a nasty thing. They've been dehumanized. We have to change society to change them. But we should not fall for the, the assault on them the weak, the poor, the disenfranchised by those who control society and who reap the wealth in society. This is my few few words for today. Talk to you later. Take care. Richard, Facts for Working People. Uh, URL is we know what's up blogspot.com. Can you like this on, fa on Facebook? Can you like it on YouTube if I put it up there? And can you share it, basically, if you agree with some of the thoughts in it? You don't have to like me, although I'm, I'm quite likable by some. If you have no enemies, there's a problem, okay? All right. Thanks a lot. Richard Meller, Facts for Working People.